Good evening. Today I'm going to do an interesting story of a man named James Van Hive. Now, from roughly the year 1860 to the year 1907, when electrocutions took over the death method for executions, he hanged almost every murderer in New Jersey. He also was responsible for some hangings in New York. Now, as of this day in 1905, he was uh, reminiscing to a newspaper reporter of the 74 people he has murdered or hanged for being murderers. Um, two are women, which is um, a rare case. And his first woman was a woman. It was in New Brunswick, and her name was Bridget Durgan. She killed the wife of Dr. Corral, with whom she had lived as a cook. They say she fell in love with the doctor and was jealous of his wife. Everybody in town was in a frenzy. Everybody in the state. But no one wanted to hang Bridget Durgan. They didn't even have a gallows as there hadn't been a hanging in New Jersey in years and years. My father, he was a shipbuilder, and they had him build the gallows. It was at the last minute that the sheriff didn't want to do this dirty after hanging the woman that my, excuse me, my father and I did the job. We set up the machine put it out in the yard in the jail, and although the walk was 25 feet high, crowds of men and boys sat on top of them to see the hanging, and all the trees around the jail were black with people clinging to the limbs at the risk of breaking the necks, all of them bent upon seeing Bridget Durgan being hung. She was a rough woman, and she killed a doctor's wife who's an invalid, and the most cold-blooded and brutal manner possible. Her grave had to be guarded for weeks. So great was the fear against her. In those days, the machine was not what it is today. I've made many improvements since then. In those days, we had to cut the rope with an axe. Now a simple spring does the work, and it's such much quicker. The last woman I hung was seven years ago. Her name was Mrs. Mahaffer. She had a little truck farm out in Orange, and she and her, and her hired man threw her husband down the stairs and killed him. I hanged her and, he, and the hired man on the same scaffolding. I used to go to New York to hang people before the lecture chair was introduced. The last hanging in tombs was my work. Four men before 10 o'clock in the morning, I hanged two last month in Peterson, and I was through the job in less than an hour. It takes about 15 minutes to put up the machine, about five minutes to do the rest. And you receive $250 for each hanging? Yes, in New Jersey, when I go to a long distance like Allentown, Pennsylvania, so he did Pennsylvania too, they usually pay a little more. It sounds like good pay, but it isn't regular work. Who, who wants two years pass without one hanging? This year has been a very busy one. I've killed three men since November, and there are seven more waiting. This last was scornful Kurt in his lips. Let me see what else I have to do. He looked down and noted that he was waiting for all the riffraff he considered judges and lawyers a pain in the neck. And um, he was waiting to hang uh, Mrs. Anna Valentina because... She kept on getting stays of ex execution and everything. And um, he'd been waiting since June, this is November, um, to do his job. And he had no patience for lawyers, sympathetic clients, judges who consider reasonable doubt, or governors who grant reprieves. And I 
thinks that some person simply evade the law and cost the state money. The further postponement of punishment is to allow an appeal to be taken is um, excited his ire. It's all nonsense. This trying against time to save the lives of people who have taken the lives of other people, said he today as he sat in his little carpenter shop in, in Newark among uh, shavings, dust, and iron weights used on the gals. I have no sympathy for murder. When 12 men have heard the evidence and have judged the person guilty, someone should carry out the, the penalty. Why, they've got a good star on Mrs. Valentino now, and she has been in prison for over a year. It would be some um, way with it, with the internet tolls. There's a bad one for you. Who is sentenced to die on June 3rd? They got to stay for her, too. Mark my words. He's 71 years old now, but he does not look more than 40. He is He's pale, vigorous, and says he has never been sick a day in his life because he doesn't worry about anything. He's bald, but his gray mustache is long and drooping. His small blue eyes are both green and humorous. And his prominent nose and stern chin show character of a doubtless essential in the gruesome work which he performs whenever New Jersey justice puts on his citizens out of title world. Like Dr. Guillotine, the nice makes his own instrument of death and he carries it with him to his place of execution. Like the Venotius, under whose hands um, most of the uh, illustrations befell during the uh, French Revolution, including the change of the family of executions, his father having assisted Van Dyke's grandfather at the latter's first hanging. The present hangman is belongs to a good family, and his his um, son also now takes pride in his work. I've hanged seventy three men and two women. He said with with a smile. It's business. That's got to be done. The sheriff won't do it, but most of them couldn't do it. They don't even snap the equal cord as they should do. I have entire charge of the prisoner from the time I go into the jail. The sheriff doesn't touch him. I do not put last. I do not wait until the last minute, and when I put the black cap over the face, I make sure that he is seen the machine, and the entirety in his room. The noose is slipped over the head to a trite, then the cap is drawn down over the face, and I pull the rope, which releases the weight. The body dies in the air six feet and then falls. There is pulse for about seven minutes sometimes, but feeling leaves the body the instant the noose is hung around the neck. Now, that's the way it should be done. A sheriff tried to hang a man not too long ago and because he wanted to save money, perhaps. I don't know. But the poor man went in the air, and he struggled until the rope broke, and he had to be marched back to his cell and hanged again the next day. They asked him, the reporter asked him, have you ever had any feeling of sympathy toward the the execute, you know, the person you're executing, and he just said no. The face just wrinkled in amusement. This is a true story. It is taken out of the um, Evening News, May fifteenth, nineteen o five, Patterson, New Jersey.